Mike from Games Played Badly. One of the things I wanted to do was kind of go through some of the tools I use for painting. Being a novice painter, some of those tools come in really handy. And one of those is a, an app that you can download onto your phone called Paint Rack. Um, and Paint Rack is basically a way for you to uh, keep track of all your paints and uh, do a whole bunch of other things. So I'm going to kind of go through this with you. Um, when you open the app, you'll notice that there are a bunch of paints in here. These are the paints that I have. Uh, when you set them up for the first, when you set this up for the first time, you won't have any paints in there. Um, one of the great things about this is that you can go through and scan your paints in. So right now, I this shows all up along the top. You go to Citadel, Reaper, Army Painter. I happen to have those paints um, that are part of my collection. Um, but it scans a whole bunch more. So if we go to um, settings and go to select manufacturers, there are a ton of them in here. Um, I don't have them all selected because otherwise I may be scrolling for days because they have so many. So I've narrowed it down to just the paints that I own. But as you can see, there's a lot of paints in here that you can reference. The way you get those paints into... Um, into your app is you use something called rapid scan and rapid scan is awesome if you're scanning a whole bunch of paints so like for the first time when you're setting this app up you may um, have a, a whole bunch of paints that you want to scan in to, to bring them into the app this is really easy because it keeps the camera on and you can rapid fire scan all sorts of things so let me show you how that works now these paints that i'm scanning i've already had in my library i took them out so that way i could demonstrate how this works um, some anomalies happen because they, they've already been scanned in, but um, at least you'll get the general gist of how it works. So we'll go ahead and click start, and you notice that little red bar pops up, and here's my barcode. Sorry, it's a little light in here. Actually, there we go. Nugget green from Reaper Bones. I'm going to go ahead and keep that open and scan another one. Again, this works better when you're in a well-lit situation. Bleached linen. And uh, let's see if it'll do... Oh, and that picked up right away. Frost blue. So once those are done, you click on end scanning. Um, and you can view your scan paints. So these are all the paints I've scanned. Now you'll notice that the paints I just scanned in look like donuts as opposed to a fully uh, filled circle. That's because even though I've scanned them in, I don't have a quantity for them. So um, if you click on them, you can go ahead and say uh, I have one bottle. Or maybe you have multiple bottles and you can go ahead and increase that quantity. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all the paints that I scanned in. There we go. Okay, so once you have quantities, they'll actually show up in my library. So there's the Naga Green and the Frost Blue and Bleached Linen. Uh, the reason why I use this uh, particularly is because as I'm painting, a lot of times I'm painting more than one miniature. And to keep track of what paints I use for various elements, are it can be painful. And it, nothing sucks more than going back and painting a miniature that you've already started on with the wrong color. Uh, and so I keep track of that through a product, uh, through the product has something in here called sets. And so sets are basically projects. So whether it be an indi individual figurine or it could be a diorama or it could be a, um, um, a model of some sort. Um, and you can name them appropriate, whatever makes sense to you. So I have Horned Fat Guy, which is, is somebody that I, I'm painting right now. And I give them descriptive names because a lot of times a miniature is a miniature is a miniature and it can be tough, tough to keep track of. So for instance with Horn Fat Guy, what I did and, and I'll talk about this in, in future videos um, is when I take a look at a miniature I'm looking at what elements are part of the miniature and that way I can kind of get my head around what I'm painting and what different colors I may want to use or how I want to differentiate various uh, aspects of the miniature. Um, and so for instance, when I got this miniature together, I realized that he had some armor plates and he had a horn out the back of his head and he had a hammer and all sorts of things. So what I did was 
I hit this plus sign. So let, let me go ahead and create a new one for you. So, um, awesome dude. Like name this guy awesome dude. Um, and I'm going to paint him. And so I create a, a set for him or her. Um, do do that. That's pretty good. Ease. Anyway, uh, so awesome dude. I can go ahead and hit plus to create a subset. So let's say awesome dude has a sword. Let's say awesome dude has a helmet. Uh, and awesome dude has um, a loincloth. I don't know. Okay. So those components being identified is helpful just as a just when you're painting a miniature so that way you know there are different elements. And then what I can do is as I'm painting, I can go in and say, okay, the helmet, I'm going to make the helmet a different color. So I can either click here to search for paints if I had a whole ton or I can just kind of scroll through them if I recognize them. Um, let's go ahead and do a filigree silver. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. So filigree silver, I have one bottle of it. That's the reason why that one's there. I go add to set. And now um, when I go back, I can see that the helmet has a color to it. If I click on that, I can see what the, the helmet is. The other great thing about here is notes. So you can obviously add multiple colors. So I could, I could go through and add a... Um, I can add a red in here if I was going to blend that or mix them together. And then we have an enter subset notes. What I use this for is to say how many drops of what I use with what. Um, also, uh, if I'm doing highlights or lowlights, I keep track of that in here so I know how I mix that so that way I have consistency throughout the entire uh, mini. Uh, it becomes very, very uh, helpful. Um, and again, like loincloth, I can say it's going to be this type of... I think that's a dragon red. Um, and so by the time you get done, you'll have something that looks like this. So um, my horn fat guy has armor plates. I go in here, uh, I can see that the armor plates, nut brown was probably used for the uh, uh, shadowing of it. Um, for instance, his hammer, if you notice, uh, there is um, various notes I have in here. The ends were a char brown and the uh, the ring was a filigree silver. So you can keep track of all that stuff for yourself, write it in however you like. Um, it works really well. And from the set standpoint, as a, a beginning painter, it, it can be tough to remember what you're doing. And especially if you have ADHD like me and you're, you're working on multiple miniatures while they're drying and just kind of round robining through them, this can really help. One of the other things that you can uh, do is wish lists. So let's say that you happen to be at a store and you see a color that you like. You can go through and scan it in just like you do anything else uh, as far as miniature paints and uh, it will add it to your wish list. And from there you can do all, you can actually go through and order them if you want. It just kind of helps you keep track. Um, color tools, I don't use these uh, only because I don't really know how. Um, the interesting thing about them is it looks like what it basically does is it gives you um, complementary colors, analogous colors. You can get the color triad, so you kind of know what colors work with each other. I'm going to play with this some more and maybe get back to you, but th this looks interesting. This was one of the reasons why I was kind of looking at this was because I was having some early on trying to figure out how to do shadows and how to do highlights. I didn't really understand that or mixing some paints together. I didn't understand what I would get. So um, there are some tools here that can help you with that. Maybe some people understand it better than I do. Um, if you go under settings, besides select manufacturers, um, you can actually go through and set um, ways to buy paint directly through Amazon, uh, which is I haven't used, but it seems pretty awesome. Um, the other great thing is you can back up your data. So right now you see that in my uh, sets, I have probably 10 miniatures. And maybe I want to hold on to that information, but I have to switch phones or I have to uninstall the app or something happens. If I back up my data, um, and right now it's not working because of something that I'm doing in the background, but um, if I back up my data when I get a new phone and I load the app, I can go ahead and restore the data as well, or if it gets corrupted on this phone. The other thing you can do here is you can reset your sets. So for instance, again, I have 10 
minis in there. Let's say I'm done creating any minis from that set or what have you. I can go ahead and wipe that out by clicking that button and then reset library. So let's say you sold all your paints and bought brand new ones and you don't want those old paints in your library anymore. Rather than going through and individually getting rid of them, you can use reset library. Uh, either way, I think this is a pretty helpful tool. Uh, when I uh, saw it, I downloaded it and used it for a little bit, and I loved it so much I actually bought it. And I believe it was $4.99 from the App Store. Um, the programmers of this aren't paying me anything. I just thought it would be really helpful for, again, um, beginning beginner and expert painters alike to kind of help you keep track of what you're doing, what you're doing it with, and uh, paint inventory.